Hi everybody, Joe here from Shutter Speak Photography. Welcome to part two of editing your photos with the HDR Merge plugin inside of Luminar Neo. Now, if you missed the first part, I do urge you to watch it because it really does cover the basics of HDR, what HDR is, and when you're gonna to wanna to use HDR. This section covers editing your photos in Luminar Neo and all of the little um, check boxes and things you wanna be aware of when using the plugin, what problems you might encounter and how to fix those problems. So, hey, I appreciate you being here and watching this video and let's start learning. All right, so let's talk about workflow. How do I merge my photos? All right, so from Luminar Neo, this is the way you're gonna do it. You're gonna choose your bracketed photos. So let's work on this one. So I have three photos here of the sunrise with this nice pool in the foreground and a little fire pit. So I'm gonna take this one, which is our, uh, let's see, which one is this? This looks like it's our negative two. So this is a two stop underexposed. This is a two stop overexposed. And this photo here is the zero or normal exposure image. So I'm gonna take these three. And now all I need to do, this is the simplest way to do it, is just drag them into the HDR merge plugin folder, which you're gonna find in the catalog tab. It's not in edit, it's in catalog. Just drop them in there. You'll see they're in. Once they're in, the only thing you have to do for a basic HDR is press merge. The AI magic will work its magic and in a few seconds we'll have our HDR image. Now, one thing you should know is that the images always go to one particular folder when you're using the HDR merge plugin. So when it's finished, you're gonna see that it's gonna go into the HDR merge images folder. Okay, and here we are in HDR merge. And that's kind of a default, you can't change that. That's where it ends up. You could always drag it back to wherever you wanted to after the fact. But so here is our merged photo. So let's take a look and see how it did. And it did a fairly good job, but there are some problems with this image. What are the problems? Well, we took three photos and in the time it took to take those three photos, you'll see the clouds moved from image to image to image. So that caused what we call ghosting. So now I'm gonna show you how to fix ghosting. Okay, so we're back in the catalog and I have my three images selected again and I'm gonna drag them into the HDR merge plugin. I'm gonna drop them there, but this time before I press merge, I'm gonna click on this little gear right here. It's kind of hidden, but it's an important gear. And unfortunately, this is not something that you can set as a default and have it set all the way. You do have to select this every time. Maybe a note to Skylum, wish list, set it and forget it. But so we have three different options here. We have auto alignment. Now these pictures were taken on a tripod. So I don't have an alignment issue, I know that. I know it's, the camera was in the exact same spot for all three. If I had handheld them, I might have had an alignment issue. Um, there's chromatic aberration, and I know I don't have that issue with these, but I could, but, but I don't. And then ghost reduction. So you'll see here it says turn on if there are moving subjects like people, cars, etc. in your brackets. Certainly clouds would apply, and probably one of the most common. So I'm going to click ghost reduction. It is going to take a little bit longer using ghost reduction. And you'll see it's going to ask me what my reference image is and the amount of ghost reduction I want to apply. So you'll see it's picked out just the file name of the image, but the important thing to note here is what's in the parentheses, 0.0. .0. That means it's taking my zero exposed image. If I clicked on this, you would see I have my negative two image here and my plus two image here. This 0, 0.0 is a very convenient way of telling me, hey, this is your median shot and it's probably a good choice. And in most cases, it is a pretty good choice. The amount of reduction, 
low, medium, high, and highest. Medium generally is, is well, it, it is the, the default, and it generally works pretty well. So don't click remove all images. <laughs> Just click back on that gear. And now click merge. And now it'll work its magic again. And in a moment or two, we'll see the results. Okay, so the merge has been completed. And you'll see now we have a much better photograph. You can take a look at those clouds. The clouds look nice now. Um, let's take a look at the previous one, just so you can see the difference. So this is the previous one. You can see the, the ghosting in the clouds here, uh, especially in this area. And, you know, sometimes you know, maybe you want that. Maybe that's that's pleasing to you. It's not what I wanted. Um, so now I have nice still clouds. And you can see the beautiful exposure of everything, the pool, the reflection of the clouds in the pool, the water, this, the rising sun, the clouds. Everything is just uh, perfect the way I remember it that morning and definitely better than I could have gotten with a single exposure. All right, let me show you another example of ghost reduction. In this image, we have a flag and you can tell it was a windy day. So we know that that flag has moved without a shadow of a doubt from image to image. So this is five shots in the bracket. And if I would emerge them, I'm going to just skip ahead and I'll show you what the results would have been. Okay, so here are the results without ghost reduction. And you can see the flag is a mess, right? So let's try this again, and this time let's use ghost reduction. I'm gonna take our five photos, drag them, drag them in, drag them in to the plugin. Make sure I select ghost reduction. Again, we have our choice of which image we wanted to use. And this is the zero normal shot photo. And this one looks pretty good, the flag. It looks pretty good there. So I'm going to accept that and click that gear and then hit merge. And let's see what happens this time. Okay, so the merge is now complete. And look at how great that flag looks now using ghost reduction. So this is a very common problem you're going to have when you are working with HDR, especially with landscapes, a flag that has moved between images because it's blowing in the wind and ghost reduction is your best friend for something like this. So there you go, ghost reduction. Okay, so I'm here in the catalog and I have three images taken in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm gonna take these three images. Now these were taken handheld. Okay, so I'm going to just drag them in. I'm going to try and drag them into, there we go, the HDR merge folder. And we're going to let the plugin just work its magic on its own. But again, keep in mind, I handheld these. I just want you to see what's going to happen if you handhold these and your images didn't quite line up in between each shot. That way you know how to fix it. So let's take a look at the result in a second. Okay, so you can see the results here. Obviously the stature didn't move, but I definitely did move. So what I need to do in this situation is I need to make sure that I go back into that gear and select auto alignment. So let's give that a shot and see how that works out. Let's go back to our catalog and let's take these three photos. We're gonna drag them over. This time I'm gonna click the gear I'm going to select auto alignment and I'm not going to select that button down there. I'm going to click that gear again, click merge and let's see what happens this time. Okay. And here are the results and you can see now it did an incredible job. You can see all of the detail that we, oops, let's zoom in there. All the detail that we captured. Let's give it a second to come to a full screen preview, right? So, Really great results. So the difference between ghost reduction and auto alignment. Ghost reduction means something in your photos moved from image to image, but you didn't move. Auto alignment means the image didn't move, but you did. So I was hand holding this and obviously I probably shook a little bit from image to image, thus 
the alignment issue. So if I check that auto alignment box, that resolves that issue. Okay, so the next thing that you should be familiar with is in this little gear here, we have a checkbox that says chromatic aberration reduction. So what does it do? It removes a purple or green fringe that you might see along the edges of your photo. So let's take a look at this photo that we just merged. And if we zoom in to 100%, we can take a look at the edges here. And you do see right at this line right there, a slight purple fringe right here. Okay, so that is because I did not select chromatic aberration reduction because I wanted to show you what it looks like. And so if you are getting this in your HDR photos, it's a good idea to check that. So let's redo this photo and this time let's use chromatic aberration reduction and we'll see how that helps us out. Let's go over to our images. Drag them in. Let's click on that gear. It's already selected, but I didn't select it the last time around. So just make sure auto alignment and chromatic aberration reduction are selected for this particular image. Don't click that button. Click the gear again and press merge. And now let's give it a second and we'll take a look at what it does. Okay, so the merge has finished up and now let's zoom back into 100%. Let's take a look at that edge. And you can see there is a dramatic reduction and that's what it's supposed to do, right? Chromatic aberration reduction of that purple fringe. So let's take a look at the before. Uh, let's see, here it is. All right, and you can see it's much more pronounced here and the after. Go back to 100, take a look and it is greatly reduced in that photo. So that's what chromatic aberration reduction is going to do. It's just going to get rid of those little purple or green fringes along the lines of your HDR images. It's particularly uh, handy with these uh, architecture type shots. So now that you know how the HDR merge plugin works, let's jump into a full edit of an HDR photograph. Okay, so I have five shots taken here five bracketed shots of a sailboat taken from my DJI Mavic 3 Classic drone. I'm going to drag them into the HDR merge folder. It is important to note you can only merge up to 10 photos and you can actually merge one photo and create that uh, HDR processing. So I am going to take a look at the gear here and I definitely want auto alignment on for sure because this was taken with my drone and it certainly is possible that the drone could have shifted in the air in between images and certainly I want ghost reduction on because you can be pretty much guaranteed that that boat moved uh, in between shots. So we're definitely going to turn those two on and I'm going to leave off chromatic aberration because I don't think that that's going to be an issue here. Our reference image for ghost reduction is the zero or properly exposed, which should be this photo right here. And that looks like a pretty good choice. And the ghost reduction amount is set to medium, which generally is a pretty good choice as well. All right, so if I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and click merge and we will wait for this to complete. Okay, so the merge has been completed. And as I mentioned, it does go into the HDR merge folder. If you didn't like it there, you could feel free to just drag it and drop it into any of your folders. But if uh, you're okay with it being there, you can go ahead and just click on presets. And from here, we have the choice of all of our standard presets. And I'm gonna scroll through some of these. And I think I might take a look at the aerial presets. Uh, how about this uh, aerial natural skies collection? We'll take a look at that. And of course we can just mouse over these and take a look at how they're going to work on our image. I kind of like that one. That one looks pretty nice. And that one's not bad either. And, you know, this one's a pretty good choice too. So let's say I'm going to pick this one. Now, of course, I can scale down using the percent slider how much of an effect I want. And I think that somewhere right around here looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I can go ahead and click on Edit. So you can see that the merge was uh, pretty successful. I mean, the 
the boat really looks great. The flag is perfect. We don't have any ghosting problems. Uh, we definitely have a problem with some curvature from the lens that we're going to have to work on a little bit. Uh, sky looks pretty good here, but of course we can always make things look a little better. So one of my favorite places to start is right here in Enhance AI and Accent AI being maybe my all-time favorite slider. Um, we don't want to overdo it, but it's always nice to bring it all the way up to see what it does. And then you can bring it back down to where you think it looks pretty good. So maybe somewhere around here. And then definitely the Sky Enhancer. Let's take a look. Now we don't want to add too much orange. There's already a lot of orange, but definitely going to bring in a little bit. So that looks pretty good. Okay, Sky AI. We're definitely not going to do any sky replacement. We have a nice sky. We can go on down to develop. Okay, and our exposure looks pretty good. This is an HDR. Maybe a little touch of contrast. Not too much, though. And I definitely want to control these highlights a little bit in the sun. So that's going to be kind of important. And let's take a look at the shadows. Not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm kind of liking the way this is coming out. I'm pretty happy with the colors. I really like the contrast between the oranges and, and the blues here. That's looking really nice. Okay, so not going to go too heavy on structure because if I do that, this is an HDR and then we're going to get that very over-processed look, which we definitely don't want. So if we did any structure at all, it would just be the slightest bit. Um, if I'm happy with pretty much everything else, then from there I can start looking at uh, this curve that's kind of bugging me a little bit and if there's anything that we're going to be able to do with that. All right, so I'm going to go over to my develop tab and we're going to take a look at optics. And we don't have any problem with fringing or anything like that, but we do have a little bit of lens distortion. So let's see what we can do uh, with that by working on some of the alignment issues. So we definitely have a little bit of lens distortion. Now the lens distortion feature should remove that. It's going to crop things in a little bit, but I'm actually probably okay with that as it removes that curve. You got to give it a little bit of time to work and you can see how it's taking the, that curve out. And if I'm happy with it there, that looks pretty good. I would pretty much leave it just like that, I think. Maybe there's a slight curve still in the end, but I don't think I want to go much more than that. Um, and at this point, I think I would go and take a look at cropping a little bit. Make sure that that horizon line is as straight as we can get it. And maybe bring things in a little bit so that the boat right there is in that cross point of our rule of thirds. And then apply that crop. And I'm pretty happy with that right there. So uh, that would be a, a quick and dirty kind of edit. Maybe a little vignette might be nice as well on this just to uh, kind of pull the eye in a little bit to uh, the center of the image. So let's choose our subject, which is definitely going to be the boat here. And not too much, maybe right around there. And that is looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I would say that, uh, you know, not much else is really needed for an image like this. I think at this point I would call this one done. Okay, so that wraps up part two of our Luminar Neo HDR Merge kind of learning lab course, tutorial, whatever you want to call it, right? But in the next section, we're going to go through how to edit your pictures using Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop as the place where you're bringing your pictures into, cataloging your pictures, and then exporting them and using Neo as a plugin from Lightroom and Photoshop. So that's going to be up in part three, so catch that next. Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. If anything in this video has helped you out, please help me out by hitting like, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified of future updates. And by all means, leave me a comment. I really do try and answer most of the comments. If you have a question, feel free to put it in there into the comments or just let me know if there was some other topic that you'd like to see covered that, that I might have missed. But anyway, thanks folks. I appreciate you and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.